Well, here's a chicken skeleton. Uh, it's one that uh, I have uh, that we demonstrate here at the museum. And you can see uh, many of the things we just talked about. We can see that femur uh, that runs from there to the knee, and uh, the balance of this bird takes place from the knee. Behind that is the keel. Uh, we see a wishbone out in front here. Let's see if we can point to that wishbone. Right here is the wishbone. That goes up to the shoulders. And this argument has been going on since dinosaurs were discovered for the first time. I mean, Sir Richard Owen had this strange idea that, uh, that cold-blooded animals were evil and warm-blooded animals were nurturing. And so he put birds and, and mammals in one category and he put you know, lizards in another. And he, he invented the word dinosaur because he wanted them to be you know, fearfully great lizards. And when the evidence came forward, which it did 150 years ago, or well, actually more, that well, you know, 200 years ago, they, they, we started developing or started finding evidence that dinosaurs were in fact warm-blooded. He had a hissy fit about it, and 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 ruined his own career lying to try to cover up these these, these relationships. And one of the things that, that one of the points that they used to try to distinguish birds from dinosaurs was saying that, and obviously you know this. I'm saying this for the benefit of the audience. One of the arguments that they had was that uh, that, that dinosaurs didn't have a wishbone. You know, so that that would be the same kind of argument that Menton is making here until they found a wishbone, and I think it was Tyrannosaurus. Yeah, uh, the wishbone, probably the furcular, is an, is another one of these features. It's it's basically turned out that every single feature which prior to let's say probably the the nineteen nineties um, features that people thought were unique to birds, none of them have turned out to be unique to birds. They all evolved deep within theropod dinosaurs, and in cases, deep within uh, dinosaurs as, as a whole. And the furcula is, is a good example of that. So uh, we had indications, certainly from the 1960s, and if you, like, again, this is, you'd have to go on a deep dive into the technical literature. To un There's a complex argument here. But going all the way back to the 1920s, people identified a furcula in non-bird theropods, we now know that it was present right at the start of theropod history because it's it's found not just you know, animals like tyrannosaurs are relatively close to birds on the theropod family tree, but a furcula has also been found in spinosaurs, in allosaurs, and in coelophysis. You know, it's an early Jurassic dinosaur, something like 200 million years old. There are furcula-like structures in the members of other dinosaur groups as well, in early members of the sauropod group even. So, um, yeah, you're, again, you're either very, very out of date if you say that a furcular is unique to birds or you're being very selective uh, with the truth. And again, that is the, the same for all of these features. They, they don't just magically appear in birds. They certainly don't magically appear with Archaeopteryx. Um, they are present uh, as gen, you know, as more widespread features throughout theropods, and uh, yeah, it goes basically goes for everything that Menton uh, spoke about. And then underneath, there's two very robust bones. We'll show you those bones in another picture right in here that are called the coracoids. Now, while practically all vertebrates have bones called coracoids, only birds have the avian type of coracoid. Well, let's just take a look at that sin sacrum. I mentioned that that's the hip bone. Uh, our hip bones have a lot of fusion too. Our ilium, ischium, and pubic bones are all combined into a hip bone on each side. So we have two. And then the sacrum is five vertebrae all fused together. Uh, but the bird has about 20 bones all fused to make its hip. And let me show you a high powered view of what that sin sacrum in the blue ring there uh, looks like. This is a single bone, that's the spelling, since sacrum. And to me, it's one of the most marvelous pieces of engineering, at least bone-wise, in the bird's body. That single piece of bone is so thin, you can shine light through it. And yet it's very strong. So it gives away some of the flexibility of the hip that we have in our hips, but gets tremendous strength at low weight. You can see where the uh, femur would attach, right here, the head of the femur. And, of course, that would slope forward to the knee. That would be the balance point. Now, this bone right here, that would be the ilium, right under the pointer. That would be comparable to our bone that's under the belt, the hip bone that's under the belt. And then uh, below that 
we have the ischium down here. That would be like the bones we sit on. When we sit, we sit on our ischial tuberosities that kind of point to the back on our hip. And then, I love this right here. These are the pubic bones. They look like two pieces of wire. And they're widely separated, and they're going to the rear. On most creatures, the pubic bones go to the front. In fact, there's two kinds of dinosaurs. There's a bird hip dinosaurs and a lizard hip dinosaurs. The bird hip dinosaurs do, in fact, have part of their pubic bone going to the back, but the sad news is evolutionists don't believe the bird hip dinosaurs evolved into birds. The reason for that is they're the, bird, they're the dinosaurs that walk on four legs like the big sauropods. And they have the most specializations in the way of horns and plates and armor and what have you. They figure they're too specialized to evolve into birds. So the bird hip dinosaurs didn't make birds. But the lizard hip dinosaurs, according to evolutionists, are the ones that they walk on two legs. And they believe they're the ones that produce the birds. Yes, so within the, the, so the conventional classification of dinosaurs into these two major groups, bird hip dinosaurs and lizard hip dinosaurs, that's come under a bit of fire since 2017 due to a new study which has suggested different relationships among the major dinosaur groups. Let's not worry about that because again that would be that would be another another tangent. But within within theropods, let's just stick to theropods, predatory dinosaurs and birds, they start out with this so-called lizard hip configuration. So where it's always difficult to explain this to people because as mammals, our, our pelvic bones are very different from those of dinosaurs. We have, so there's the ilium at the top of your pelvis, which you can feel at your, at your sides. Uh, and then uh, between your legs, pointing downwards, forwards and backwards, you've got pubic bones and ischial bones. And our pubic and ischial bones are short, but those are dinosaurs, their pubic and ischial bones are very long. They project variously downwards and forwards and downwards and backwards. And the typical condition for reptiles and indeed the typical condition for vertebrate animals is to have pubic bones that project down and forwards and ischial bones that project down and backwards. So if you've got that condition, and that's the so-called lizard hip condition in dinosaurs, that's just the normal vertebrate condition, it's nothing special. Most theropods have got that typical condition, but then in some of them, the the pubic bone instead of pointing down and forwards became down straight down instead of down and forwards and then over time began to rotate backwards such that it was pointing down and backwards so theropods evolved the bird hipped condition which is also present in the so-called bird hip dinosaurs which don't include birds and it gets so confusing the way you know when you try and explain it that i, I just generally try try and avoid it but within okay. theropods Sorry. Yeah. We, so the the key the key group within theropods that we're particularly interested in whenever we're talking about bird origins are Manoraptorans. And that name means hand grabbers or hand predators. It's the group that includes, yeah, dromaeosaurs, that's the velociraptor type dinosaurs, truodontids, which are kind of similar but have longer um, legs, oviraptors, and a bunch of other groups. And somewhere within this Manoraptoran group, that is where this transition from a pubic bone, uh, there's two of them, so paired pubic bones, they underwent this transition from the pubic bones, instead of pointing forwards, downwards and forwards, instead they, they become straight, straight downwards, and then they start to revert, and they're projecting backwards and downwards, which is the condition inherited by, by birds. So if you look at Manoraptorans like Velociraptor and its related uh, dromaeosaurs, yeah, they have this uh, down and backwards configuration of, of the pubic bones. Uh, speaking of lizard hip, they say that a T-Rex, which would be a theropod dinosaur, the kind that evolved into birds according to evolution, they say that a T-Rex has a syncecrum. You got a good look at that syncecrum? Let's go take a look now at the T-Rex hip. Does that look similar to you? Not even close. Just like in our own hip, there's a big iliac blade on top that would be under our belt. Uh, here are the ischial bones going to the back. And look at these pair of bones fused together, forming a big skid. They're the pubic bones. I can't think of anything more unlike a bird than that hip. I, I think that um, one of the one of the tricks 
uh, and of course, you know, we're very familiar with this, used by creationists all the time, is to imply that organisms, if they belong to a group, then everything within the group is essentially the same. So they want there to be a dinosaur type, which is very distinct from the bird type. Well, of course, the reason that part of the reason that we can test these these claims is that we know that within groups you obviously see a, a, an enormous amount of variation but the variation when imposed on a tree matches what we think you know matches geological time and you know it, it matches what we think is the uh the, the process of evolution. So within predatory dinosaurs, ex so birds are theropods. There's a lo whole lot of reasons for thinking that. But excluding birds within within other theropods, you see this variation where those that are closest to birds obviously share a, a huge number of features with birds that other theropods don't. So he was saying throughout that, you know, Tyrannosaurus and Compsognathus are very different from birds, but he wouldn't look, he didn't talk about the anatomical features that are present in animals like Velociraptor, you know, other dromaeosaurs, how they are very, very bird-like, way more bird-like than Compsognathus and Tyrannosaurus are. So, so talking about the pelvis, saying that Tyrannosaurus and Compsognathus differ from a bird in a pelvis, differ from a bird in the pelvis. If you look at Velociraptor, Velociraptor has a pelvis that's very, very similar to that of Archaeopteryx. So he, he's saying that he wants theropods to be part of this lizard-hipped group, this this group where the 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 two lower bones projecting downwards from the pelvis, the pubis and the ischium. They, uh, I don't really have the ability to do any good diagrams that are going to work here. Let's try, let's, uh, isn't that, that's not, that's not even worth it. I'm not going to try that. I'm not going to try that. So, um, uh, yeah, he, he was saying that the, the dinosaurs, the, the non-bird dinosaurs have these downward projecting uh, pelvic bones that project, you know, one forwards, one backwards. Whereas birds have got this system where both bones project in parallel backwards. The tail is in the direction that I'm pointing. Um, the most bird-like predatory dinosaurs like Velociraptor, they have that bird-like configuration. So it's dishonest to point to a Tyrannosaurus and say, here you go, dinosaurs are totally different from birds. No, no, the most bird-like non-birds are very similar to birds. And they are in every single aspect of anatomy that you can that you can think of. You go through, it's, it's actually very difficult to um, concisely marshal the um, body of evidence supporting the inclusion of birds within theropods and within dinosaurs because the you know every single aspect of the skeleton of of predatory dinosaurs you know is bird like and becomes more bird like the closer in the family tree you get to birds that massive skid down there and most dinosaurs the, the two-legged ones have massive pubic bones i believe they sit on those they put their weight on that when they squatted down uh, there's no other reason to have such a mass of pubic bones. Certainly ours aren't anything like that. Now, for a bird to lay eggs, you can't have all this stuff in the way. The whole abdominal area has to be open. Uh, think of this. A chicken lays an egg that's a pretty good proportion of the size of its body. I mean, uh, uh, it's big. How big is an egg from a full-grown T-Rex? It's the size of a football. Well, a football to a T-Rex would be like a BB to a chicken. It wouldn't require any special hip structure at all to lay a BB. But for a bird to lay eggs the size they do, the whole pelvic area is very, very different, very, very open uh, with these thin pubic bones going to the back. So there's that big old heavy skid under the triangle there. Now, somewhere in his video, he mentioned the fact that another one of these features that makes birds unusual is that their pubic bones aren't fused together in the middle. So you mentioned a moment ago that he was referring to Tyrannosaurus and saying that its pubic bones, which again are in the typical condition, projecting downwards and forwards, they're fused together at their ends. And they, and they have this gigantic kind of um, skid-shaped structure at the end. And, and he, he mentioned that um, it may have been for for sitting on, and that's not a ridiculous idea. It's actually hard to think what else it was for. Maybe it was for supporting some of the body weight when the animals were, you know, reclining or sleeping or whatever. But in, um, yeah, and so, so that, that condition of having the pubic bones fused together, that's the typical condition. 
but in modern birds the pubic bones aren't fused together they're, they're, they're well apart they're actually separated and so they're not not just projecting downwards and backwards they're also projecting on either sides of the gut and he's saying again you know hey wow this is really different from the the dinosaur condition well again going back to what we were saying right at the start of this discussion that's one of those things that's true for modern birds but isn't true for all the archaic fossil birds like archaeopteryx so you look at the pubic bones of archaeopteryx they are basically like those of Velociraptor. They are fused together at their at their tips. So they're projecting downwards and backwards and they're um, yeah, fused together at their tips, moving uh, the parts that are away from the body. And it's only once you get up into um, advanced birds, birds that are more like the living ones, that the pubic bones aren't fused together and they are spread apart and they're on either side of the guts. So again, it's a weird feature present in fossil birds, present in fossil birds closely related to living birds and it's present in living birds as well.